Hi, my name is Rawlinson Rivera, and I'm here to talk to you today about Cohesity support for Microsoft Hyper-V virtualization platform. Cohesity now provides support for Microsoft Hyper-V virtualization platform, and specifically, we do it for two versions, Hyper-V 2012 R2 and Hyper-V 2016. It's important to highlight the differences in the implementation details of how we achieve that for the two different versions at the same time. I'd like to highlight and show you some of those things. So let me highlight some of the points of integration with both supported versions of Hyper-V. We utilize Microsoft's native APIs for communication and interaction with any of the subsystems that are part of the Hyper-V architecture. In particular, we utilize WMI to conduct any sort of communication between the actual Hyper-V host and anything that's going on there, while we utilize PowerShell APIs to communicate with anything that has to do with the centralized management portal, in this case, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. So in this case, we typically have connectivity between our Cohesity cluster, which then communicates with our ephemeral sort of agent that kind of gets instantiated every time we need to perform a job or a function that is particularly there. So this happens with System Center, but at the same time, it also happens with directly the Hyper-V host because we have the ability to communicate directly with both. Now, by having that level of connectivity with those subsystems, Whenever we have to instantiate some sort of job or task in terms of communication between our helper and System Center service, we use PowerShell APIs. Anything that goes between Hyper-V directly, regardless of the version, whether it be 2012 R2 or 2016, it'll happen in native WMI in this case. Now, the important fact is that these two versions of Hyper-V are quite different. So it's important to understand what actually happens and how we actually perform our functions to deliver the best possible efficiencies and, and capabilities in terms of the data protection and recoverability. So for space efficiency features and capabilities, we combine both Microsoft and Cohesity's technologies to deliver optimal data protection and recoverabilities to Hyper-V. We're leveraging some of the technologies that Microsoft introduces in the sense of VSS. We also leverage Cohesity's own change block tracking mechanism. Our ephemeral agent that allows us to sort of orchestrate the communication within the subsystems. And at the same time, within a particular version of Hyper-V, we utilize Microsoft's new native change block tracking mechanism, also known as RCT, Resilient Change Block Tracking. So let me draw out the pictures and see how the communications actually take place within the systems. So let me explain the definition of how things work within Hyper-V 2012 R2. So with Hyper-V 2012 R2, we utilize WMI, VSS, and Cohesity's CVT. Now, obviously, the communication between our helper here happens over WMI. Uh, it will orchestrate, range, and deal with everything that has to do with communicating with the subsystems with regards to arranging uh, snapshots, communication, and all of that between, number one, communicating bidirectionally with our helper, and also arranging the communication with Cohesity's CBT mechanisms. Now, in this particular case, we're able to identify whenever blocks are changed by being read or utilized within the subsystem. So in this particular case, with WMI, we can actually communicate with the Hyper-V service to identify all of the virtual machines, identify whether there's been any changes, their inventory, their properties, and we can actually pull them into the system and identify them. When it comes to utilizing or consuming or changing the blocks in the data, this is when it gets identified and detected with our helper, and we have the ability to sort of or orchestrate within the system via VSS. Our CBT change block tracking mechanism will allow us to identify exactly what blocks were changed as they're being utilized and changed and read through the, through the environment. So what I mean by the environment is the fact that we're able to identify any of the changes that happen within the particular VHD or VHDX files. And in that way, we can actually perform uh, the actual functions that we do in Cohesity and then able to identify the, the, the blocks that have changed and we can effectively deliver the value that we typically deliver and now introduce it to Hyper-V. So once the snapshots have been identified, the data is now transferred through Cohesity's secure layer from the primary storage system onto Cohesity's data platform, where the files are actually maintained in its fully hydrated form on our platform. So let me show you how this works. 
So in this case, our cohesity ephemeral agent will actually uh, utilize WMI to manage and control the creation of the snapshots and the deletion, but also at the same time, it will arrange for the integration between RCT so that it now is able to identify whenever the changes uh, happen within the blocks and then actually perform the particular backup. So in this particular scenario from a Hyper-V 2012 R2, what happens here is this, we eliminate the need to use the Cohesity CVT uh, filter or driver because we no longer need it. In this case, VSS gets also eliminated because now we're going to directly sort of interact and be orchestrated with RCT in this particular case, and it will become uh, the item in play. Once this has been identified, what happens is, just like in Hyper-V 2012 R2, now that we have the changes, we will then transfer the data, the files, those changes from the primary storage uh, system through the Cohesity Secure layer onto our platform where the drives or the files, as we call them, will be, will be maintained fully hydrated. Now, there's one last thing I'd like to point out, and it's particularly with the virtual machines. And it's important to understand that not all virtual machines within the Hyper-V world are the same. In order to leverage RCT, virtual machines have to be within the latest version of the virtual machine uh, that is available with either 2016 or, you know, typically version 6X and up. The reason I say this is because some of these capabilities are not available on the virtual machines that are in the previous versions, which are some of the ones that actually exist in Hyper-V 2012 R2. Now, in the sense that all of this becomes a very effective, very efficient way of, of protecting and recovering information from a Hyper-V infrastructure, now that everything is residing and sitting on our platform, another capability that everyone using Hyper-V can leverage is the fact that you will now be able to natively utilize our integration with Azure in the cloud to effectively transfer and utilize uh, the cloud for potential other use cases which are native to this particular infrastructure which all runs under Hyper-V. You'll be able to instantiate information up here for disaster recovery, run analytics, and some other use cases that may, be, that may be applicable to you as a customer or anyone that's interested in using this. The whole point is that even when we transfer information from our platform to Azure, it is still going to be based on space efficiency capabilities to do compress and sustaining all the value and all the capabilities we introduce to the support of Hyper-V. Thank you for watching.